The artist I chose is Nina Katadurian. She's an Armenian American artist and born in Stanford, California in 1968. She attended the White Independent Study Program in New York City in 1996 and currently lives and works in Brooklyn. Nina is an associate professor in the faculty of New York New York University Gallatin School of Individualized Study and she traveled a lot to a lot of countries in her life which influenced a lot of her artworks. Some people describe her as an interdisciplinary artist and her work includes video, performance, sound, sculpture, photogra photography and public projects. Her conceptual ideas are often marked by an intrinsic sense of humor um, characterized by a whimsical, um, intelligent, ironic, and systematic ordering of nature, of natural process. Ina Kachadurin is represented by Catherine Clark Gelly in San Francisco. Her portfolio is divided by subject matter and mediums. Subject matters are like maps, language translation, uninvited collaboration with nature, confusing animals, charts and system, and yeah. And the mediums are video, sound, photography, paper, sculpture, or mixed media, and public projects. Um, the artist traveled a lot, which, like I said, influenced a few of her artworks, like, um, for example, her mapping. Um, she created a lot of maps during college, especially um, the first one was a response to an assignment. And this was like the beginning of, well, she marks it as the beginning of her work with maps. And here you can see this art project. Um, after, after this one, she created a lot of maps um, with all different kinds of things like subways, she traveled to Finland uh, for a long time, where she created a few maps with, um, influenced by Finland. Then geography, geographic pathologies, um, which connects their ge geography and anatomy. Um, Austria and Spain. Um, then on language and translation. Um, when she traveled to Finland, she visited a lot of. When she went to Finland, she visited a lot of islands and she took a rock from her home, California, with her and switched them out with every. and switched the stone out on mm -hmm. every single island she went to. That means that she carried one stone to the next island, took a new one to the next one, and then and so on. And well, she kept the last one from the last island. And this artwork is called Trans exercise. Another influence um, for, of her artworks were the fact that her parents are foreign born. Um, so she and their, her parents um, still have like an accent and they practice a lot to get rid of it. And so she converted this into an artwork by filling, filming and recording the vocal practices they had. Um, and so she basically showed their process and their accent limitation. Um, another topic of hers is confusing animals and she works a lot with sounds with sound and sound effects too. Um, for example, she created this zoo, um, which has, has sound and sound installation and monitors and projections. She got uh, like over eight years material from different zoos just to create this one project. Then about charts and system. This is basically about different topic families, um, like airplane family tree or rock family tree. Um, and she arranged different types of rocks or airplanes or other things to a family tree so the viewer could identify themselves um, or with the parents or friends, like whatever they could connect with the family tree. 
Um, her projects um, basically have been exhibited widely, including a solo show at the Museum of Contemporary Art in San Diego in July 2008, the Turku Art Museum in Finland in January 2006, and the Art Place Foundation for Contemporary Art and the forthcoming exhibition. Um, one specific artwork I looked at was the is called Coastal Merger. Um, her personal description of the artwork is, this is a quote, um, I was born in California, moved to the East Coast for college, went back to the West Coast for graduation school, and now live on the East Coast again. This map, refle this map reflects my bicoastal experience of this country. Um, well, I think this artwork represents a big chapter of her life and what important decisions she's made in her past few years. And if she would have changed like only one thing, like if she would have made one different choice, this map would could look totally different. Um, so she created that to show what her life looked like the past in the past years. few years. And she used the same technique as she used in other of her mapping artworks. She used um, cutouts from real maps and added them together on a watercolored base in form, in a form and shape she wanted and to and which represents her idea the best, represents her idea the best. Um, this artwork makes people think about their own life, like where they've been, what they've experienced on their journey, like this journey which is um, represented by, basically a road and all the roads and the different parts of their life so basically their life path and what important decisions they've made in life and with decision which decision made what happen in with my artwork which is influenced by Nina Kachaturian's coastal murder I want to show my personal life path so like where I've been so far and I took the idea of mapping and like her idea of the mapping and the watercolor base and um, I added cities where I've lived in so far and ordered in the way to show which city followed which so I started with the city where, I've, where I'm born and so the path goes through all the life-changing decisions or all these cities I've lived in, um, um, which also let me end up here in Oakville in Canada. But because my path is not over yet, of course, um, I didn't like just end it in Oakville. I just let it end in, out of the picture so that you can see that it does not have an end yet. So it basically ends in the unknown.